Hey, welcome to our final energy source presentation, and today it's looking at biomass energy. We had mentioned in class before that biomass energy was energy from recently living things, and so we're going to take a look at what does that exactly include. And so you would consider things like wood, but also trash, landfill gas, crops, and alcohol fuels. All of these things pretty much have in common the same sequence of energy transformations, and that is the energy is starting at the sun. And so when the sun comes in and it's uh, electromagnetic radiation, uh, it's coming down and that energy gets absorbed by plants and is used in photosynthesis to convert uh, that radiation energy into chemical energy. So we form up sugars and the sugars are going to be uh, transformed as they go through some different processes and it's still chemical energy at that point. Ultimately, how do you get that chemical energy to become useful energy? Well, we would burn it. And so you're going to be burning your fuel, your biomass fuel, and that will produce heat or random kinetic energy, which you could then use to run a power plant. Um, when you're burning biomass, it is hydrocarbons that you're burning. And so these hydrocarbons are going to release carbon dioxide and water vapor. So at this point, you're saying, Man, that sounds an awful lot like fossil fuels. And so when we look at the similarities, yes, it does have a lot of similarity in terms of the where the matter is coming from. It's, it's carbon dioxide that's been pulled out of the atmosphere um, and then fixed into these sugar molecules so that we're getting chemical energy. We have a lot of similarities in terms of the exhaust products that you're getting out of them as well. But a major difference is when was that carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? And when we consider biomass, it's recently living, so it recently came out of the atmosphere. When we're talking about fossil fuels, these are plants that lived a really long time ago. So this is like really old carbon dioxide that was then fixed into the chemical structure of the plants, which then got buried and became these fossil fuels that were stored underground. So that carbon has been stored out of the atmosphere for a very long time and just kind of been tucked away underground. We are taking that out in massive amounts, burning it and putting that carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And so the difference when you compare to a biofuel and biomass is that well you you would be replanting new plants to grow your next crop to turn into more biomass fuel and by doing that you are effectively removing the carbon that was put into the atmosphere by the plants that you or the biomass that you had just burned so it's a complete cycle and therefore it's often argued to be carbon neutral. It doesn't add additional carbon dioxide to the atmosphere because even though, yes, CO2 is coming off of the burning reaction, it is not actually new because it's been recently in the atmosphere to begin with. It came from plants that had just recently taken it out of the atmosphere. Now, other forms of our um, biomass energy besides like burning wood would be uh, looking at things like landfill gas, and we've already talked about that. Um, we've also already talked about burning trash, and that would be in this category of biomass fuels. But something that we haven't really talked about is a way that you may not even be conscious of that, that we use biomass energy all the time. Your car is probably running off of biomass energy uh, a little bit at least. Um, and what do I mean? I'm talking about this. You go to the gas pump and you read the little sticker on there and it says this product may contain up to 10% ethanol by volume. Um, typical unleaded gas here in Connecticut, you're going to find about 10% ethanol and ethanol is biomass fuel. So why are we putting it there? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one, it's been shown to reduce certain pollutants that are given off when uh, you are combusting the fuel inside the engine, the, the byproducts that are given out come out a little bit cleaner when you have ethanol blended into it. And so that's one of the reasons we, we'd use that. Another argument for ethanol use is it's going to extend the lifespan of how long will our fossil fuels last. So gasoline will last that much longer if we're only using 90% uh, of it instead of 100% of it in our gas tanks. 
So when we look at how do you make ethanol, how, what's the process, where is it coming from? We have a typical pattern for how that happens today, and that is corn. Um, so there's a lot of corn growth in the United States, and it's not all for food. Some of that corn is for the purpose of making fuel. And if you look at crops like, like corn, you harvest it, you're actually using the edible part of the corn to make the fuel for a car, for example. You'd grind it up, you'd separate it uh, into the different kinds of sugars that you have, and you'd distill them. Just like you're making alcohol, you're doing a distillation process, and that's basically what you're producing. And this is going to get blended into gasoline, and it burns, and it, it's extra fuel in a sense. Um, so it, it's going to be then producing some carbon dioxide, but you would argue it's neutral because of the fact that it's getting reabsorbed by the next crowd. Uh, next round of crops that you are growing that are taking that carbon dioxide in. But one of the questions that people have is, is this really a good strategy? I mean, after all, we're taking a food product and we're making a, a fuel that we can run a car on. And, and as this graphic shows, eight bushels of corn could equal 21.6 gallons of fuel or it could be enough food to feed a person for an entire year. I don't know if you want to actually eat corn for every meal of the day, but it's just making a point that that's a lot of food that we're talking about just to equal 21.6 gallons of fuel. So that's certainly a, a concern and something that we should think about. So some people have thought, well, wouldn't it be better if we could use the parts of the plant that aren't so useful. Um, and so one of the ideas to, to take the plant matter that's not digestible, but, but use it in a way where we could still do the same kind of process. And this is referred to as cellulosic ethanol. And one of the ideas of a crop that we can grow really quickly and it has full of material that could be used in this process is known as switchgrass. And so we could plant this grass that grows rapidly, harvest it, and then you just have to do some extra steps. Some initial pretreatment is necessary, and that pretreatment usually involves shredding it up and then adding some chemicals to break things down so that you can get the regular fermentation reactions to take place. And so when you can do that, you can then produce fuel from the, like the waste products or what are typically considered waste products from a plant. And that seems to be an idea that's very promising. The downsides are cost. It's going to cost more. It's going to be more involved in order to do those additional steps of breaking it down in order to get the fuel um, made out of it. If, if we wanted to think about, well, are there any other issues with biomass? Well, one of the things to consider is, is it actually really carbon neutral? Because if, in fact, we're harvesting our crops with fossil fuel-based equipment, and we're transporting them and processing them using fossil fuel based equipment, then we're actually going to be putting more carbon emissions into the atmosphere than uh, we're going to be taking out in the process of growing the plants and, and producing new biofuels. And then the final thing, um, you have to consider what's the impact on the soils. Um, year after year of growing and harvesting the same plant matter is going to deplete them of nutrients and it's also going to get people to use more fertilizers and pesticides. So now that we've looked at biomass, I want you to consider, is this something worth pursuing? Should we be supporting biofuels for our future, or should we be looking in other directions?